welcome to our service for the 3rd of July 2021. I'm going to begin today with a few announcements. I will be on holidays for the month of July. Pulpit supplies have been arranged and pastoral support will be provided. If you need uh, the services of a minister, please contact your elder or Mrs Sylvia Pollock, our church worker. Uh, pulpit supplies have been arranged. Uh, so next Sunday, Dr James McKeown from Union Theological College in Belfast Bible College, a lecturer in Old Testament history, will be with you. He's travelling from Belfast, so I would encourage you to make that extra special effort to be at church as he leads you in a service of worship. And then on the 20th or the 18th of July, Miss Audrey Hodge from First Oma will be with you. And this will be a mini PW service, as some of the ladies from our PW will be taking part in the service. So I commend the services to you over the summer months. I will be on sabbatical. Uh, for July and August and again our Kirk sessions have uh, arranged different events they're all detailed in the church newsletter there are youth events there's events for teenagers there are events uh, for families barbecues so there's a lot that's happening and I would encourage you to get involved and to give your support uh, to the different events but back now to this week coming on Wednesday night there is a walk in Drumliga at 7.30 and then at the end of the walk, there is fruit salad for everyone. And the following week, the 14th, there's also a walk in Drumliga. And then on the 21st and the 28th, the walks will be held in Mountjoy at 7.30. If you can help by providing fruit salad at any of these events, either Mountjoy or Drumliga, please contact uh, Sylvia Pollock. But all the announcements are in our church uh, newsletter. So I think uh, that's all our announcements. We're going to begin our service today and today we'll be reading from Hebrews chapter 13 and we read these words. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so that gives us confidence that our God is the same and he never changes. His love for us is new every morning. So let's sing praise to him now. Let us worship our great God who never changes as we sing our opening hymn. Lights of the world shine upon us, sets us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze. So 
our faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell your story shine on me shine on me shine Jesus shine fill this land with the fire Let's come to God now in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you that you are the God of love, that you so loved each one of us, that you sent your only Son, the Lord Jesus, into the world to be our Saviour and friend. And so we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. We see your love displayed on Calv at Calvary's cross, where Jesus died to take away all our sin. We remember that it was while we were still sinners that Christ Jesus died for us. We praise you and adore you, the God of love, the God who loves us, the God who gave his Son to die for us, to redeem us. And so we come today and we confess our lack of love. We do not love you with all our heart and soul, mind and strength. We do not love others and so we pray that you would forgive us and that you would restore us to yourself and send your Holy Spirit so that we would truly love you with all our very being and that we would show forth that love to others in our family, in our church, in our workplaces, in our communities. Father God, we do thank you for your constant goodness to us for your mercies which are new every morning, for that grace that saved us and that grace that sustains us, we give you thanks. So be with us now and help us to truly worship you in spirit and in truth. May we know your living presence with us and to you be all the praise and glory through Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. We're going to turn now and read uh, God's word and we're going to read uh, Hebrews chapter 13 is God's word. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers for by so doing some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if they were the, as if you were their fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we end there at verse 8, asking God's blessing to this reading from his word. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer as we pray for others. Let us pray. Father God, help us to love one another. Help us to care for one another. Help us to open our eyes to see the need. Help us to open our hands to be generous 
to give and to share with others. Father God, we remember those who are mistreated in our world. The victims of slave trafficking or uh, sold into the sex trade. Little children as slaves. We remember persecuted Christians around the world. And we remember all who are mistreated, who are treated unfairly. And we pray that you would sustain them, that you would rescue them and that you would help them. We remember Tear Fund, Christian Aid, Open Doors, Barnabas Fund and others who work with marginalised and neglected people. Lord, through their work, may many people be helped and blessed. We thank you for the gift of marriage and we pray that all marriages would know your blessing. We pray for family life, that you would help parents and children, grandparents and all to love you and to support each other. And we remember families today where there is need, maybe illness or sickness or surgery or recovery from illness or a particular need. We bring it to you now in the silence. Father God, we remember our leaders and in particular our elders. We thank you for them and we pray that you would bless them and guide them, give them wisdom as they make decisions for the future. We thank you for them. And Father God, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour, who is in heaven interceding for us now. We thank you for Jesus who died on the cross to take away our sin. We thank you for Jesus, our friend and King, our Saviour and Lord. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We join our voices together now as we sing our next item of praise. Thank you. 
Love is the hallmark of Christianity. Throughout scripture, God is referred to as the God of love. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to love him who first loved us and show that love to others. Our reading from Hebrews chapter 13 shows us how deep and far the love of God runs. It tells us who we are to love, what we are to love and how we are to love. Firstly, the writer of Hebrews tells us that we are to love our brothers and sisters. We are to love our fellow Christians. We are to show God's love to one another. The world out there is watching us and may they be able to say, see how these Christians love one another. Our love for each other will be a witness to a watching world. When we love Jesus, that love affects all our relationships. And so as we live out our everyday lives, we should love one another. And how does that love manifest itself? Well, we care for one another. We pray for one another. We forgive one another. We encourage one another. We support with one another. We bear with each other. These are all positive things that we will do. And of course, these are all costly in terms of our time, our energy, our resources. But as we love like that, we are reflecting God's love for us. So may we continue to love one another in our churches as brothers and sisters. Of course, we're different. Wouldn't it be great if everybody was just like me? But sadly, we're not all uh, the same. We have different backgrounds, different uh, hobbies, interests. We are differences. Some people will be easier to love than others. But we are called to show love to one another. Secondly, we are called to love strangers. There are lots of references throughout scripture to people entertaining strangers and uh, being, and in so doing have be entertained angels and have been unaware of that. Hebrews was written at a time when there was no hotels or bed and breakfasts and travellers were dependent on people to take them in and show them hospitality. Now our world is totally different from that day. But yet the principle remains the same, that we should use our homes in ways to help and bless each other. I don't know how many people we can have in our homes at the minute. The restrictions seem to change every week, if not every day. But when it is safe to do so, we should open our homes in a way to help and to bless others, even strangers. Thirdly, we are called to love the prisoner and those who have been mistreated. At the time that Hebrews was written, if someone was in prison, they were dependent on others to bring them food and water and clothing. We often maybe forget about prisoners. I know I have, and until I read this passage, I have been challenged. Someone maybe is sent to prison, we just forget about them. They're behind closed doors. But we are called to love the prisoner. We are called to remember them and to uh, maybe support their families. We're called maybe to remember chaplains who work in our prisons in McGabry or McGilligan. Yes, they might be away behind locked doors, but we should still remember them and we should love them. We're also to love, related to that, those who are mistreated. And in our world, aren't there lots of mistreated people? From the little child who works uh, in a factory somewhere for very little money, for the woman who is sold into the sex slave, to the refugee. There are so many mistreated people in our world. Verse 3 tells us that we are to show love to mistreated people as if we ourselves were suffering. We are not to lose our sense of love for the mistreated. So that is why we support Christian Aid and Tear Fund and the Barnabas Fund and um, Open Doors that work with persecuted Christians who are mistreated around the world. And then verses 4 and 7, that theme of love continues. We are to love marriage. This is about loving our neighbour and not coveting or taking our neighbour's spouse. Marriage is good for society. 
marriage is God's invention between one man and one woman. And so we should love marriage and support marriage and family life. I'm not going to say too much about uh, what happened last week uh, with Matt Hancock. But behind the headlines, there were two families who were ripped apart by that uh, affair. And in all the commentary uh, that was printed or spoken on our TV or radio waves, very little, in fact probably nothing was said about the fact that God's commandments were broken. People were more concerned that he uh, broke social distancing guidelines. But we are called to be people who love marriage, who support marriage, who work to strengthen marriages and family life. Our society doesn't believe in marriage any longer. Marriage can be, uh, can be treated in a very casual way. But marriage is for the good of society. And so we should support marriage and family. Then the writer of Hebrews says that we should love contentment. We are to keep our lives free from the love of money. We are going to be content with what we have. Someone has said if we have a roof over us, clothes on our back, food to eat, and the Lord Jesus in our hearts, we have all that we ever need. Contentment means that we are trusting in God, that God will meet all our needs. So we are to love contentment. And then in verse 7, we are to love our leaders. The people who lead us in the church. The people who instructed us and continue to instruct us in the ways of Jesus. So maybe you can think of a godly minister in the past. A Sunday school teacher or a youth leader. Or someone who taught you the ways of Jesus. And as you remember them, you want to imitate their faith. As I go on holidays and leave the congregation under the care of the elders. I want to thank God and publicly thank uh, the elders in Drumliga and Mountjoy. They've all stepped up a gear uh, over the past year or 18 months through this pandemic in leading our congregation in caring for you, the people in their districts, through phone calls, practical uh, means, uh, and in so many other ways. And we are blessed to have so many godly and hard-working elders. And I want to commend them and thank God for them. And I want you to support them as they continue to lead us. So we're to love uh, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're to love strangers. We're to love prisoners and the mistreated. We're to love marriage. And uh, we're to love our leaders. But most of all, these verses tell us that we are to love Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. These verses remind us that Jesus loves us. And we are to love the one who first loved us. We are to love Jesus, who is the same yesterday. Which brings us back to Calvary, where we see God's love for us in Jesus. And at Calvary, there we see the extent of God's love for you and me. As Jesus died to take away our sin and take all our shame upon himself. Jesus is the same yesterday and today. Jesus loves you today. Do you know that? Do you believe that? I trust you do. Jesus loves you today. Jesus is in heaven interceding or praying for you today. So Jesus is the same yesterday, brings us back to Calvary. Today brings us to heaven where Jesus is interceding for you and forever. Because Jesus will come back and take those who love him to be with him. And they will be with him forever and ever. So in this passage of scripture, we see what love looks like. And as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are to love the one who first loved us and gave his life for us. And as we love him, he pours his Holy Spirit into our hearts so that we will love our brothers and sisters in the church. We will love strangers, the prisoner, the mistreated. We will love marriage and our neighbour. We will love our leaders. But most of all, we will love Jesus, who, was, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. So as we live out our lives, 
may we live out lives of love. And as we live out the life of love, that others may come to experience the love of God in Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we pray that we would love as you has loved. We pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with love for our brothers and sisters in the church. Help us to love the stranger. Help us to love the prisoner and the mistreated. To love marriage and to work for strong marriages. To work for strong families. Help us to love our leaders. But most of all to love the one who first loved us and who laid down his life for us on the cross. So may we grow in our love for you and in our love for others. Amen. We respond to God's word as we sing our closing hymn. our service to a close and next Sunday there will be one more pre-recorded service uh, the guest speaker next week will be our moderator Reverend Dr David Bruce and he will be uh, he has provided a service for online for uh, next week but until I see you again I thank you for worshipping with us Sunday by Sunday online and may you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of of the Holy Spirit with you, this day and through the days ahead. Amen.